Now, into the ticket office of Disneyland. <laughs> oh boy, let's do this! <laughs> don't think the CIA is going to be trying to hack your second gen iPod. I didn't think so. There might have been a lot of illegal music on there, I won't doubt it, but... You were supposed to bring death to the flagships, not join them. That's a pill with two screens and it's open and you gotta swallow it. iTunes is a constant source of embarrassment. <laughs> Behind the scenes camera crap. Uh, here, tell us about courage, Phil. Tell us about courage. I am Nadella. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't do it anymore without laughing. I was gonna do the whole thing. Welcome, everyone, to the Calling All Platforms podcast. I am your host, Wes, and I'm here with Landon. Hello. And Caleb. Hi. We are here to talk all things tech this week. Hey, guess what, guys? I'm here. Uh, and I feel those crooked shoes you talked about last week. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, he, he didn't, didn't, he think didn't say I'd they listen. were. He didn't say they were crooked. Uh, he just uh, said they were misshapen. But, yes, <laughs> whatever. I'm here to fill them shoes. That's good. There's nobody else to wear them. I love the sheepish look you guys had. Oh, he did listen. <laughs> no, I was. I was fully wanting you to listen to them. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Every time I'm not there, you guys want me to listen. I know. Trust me. <laughs> I went from what being Darth Vader and slaying my child and stuff you know it just the list goes on let's be real <laughs> anywho we're here to talk things tech not weird shoes west wears let's go ahead and let's move forward shall we hey you know something interesting and i'm gonna bring this up because i don't know i'm kind of curious what you guys think of this rumor shall we so there's a big rumor going on because about Microsoft buying Netflix. So where this sparked from, kind of give you an idea. So basically Netflix partnered with Microsoft for its ads and its ad stuff. So right, that's where it started. And then a lot of journalists and a lot of people have been talking about this. And it's like, you know, this might be the start to where Microsoft, after their acquisition of Blizzard, might look at buying uh, Netflix. And and it's not like a quick little thing, but there, this rumor is exploding, and Microsoft's not saying yes or no. They're just like, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, uh, I was thinking about this. I'm like, I mean, th- that's probably one of the only things they need in their plethora of entertainment, I guess, is, I mean, they have a movies and TV app, but... That they don't it, have a streaming service. But they don't have a streaming service. Yeah, but they can integrate and be like, "Hey, if you have these movies already, you can just stream it from our Netflix, if you will." Well, and that's just really, you know, like Apple tries to bootstrap a streaming service right from the ground up. Microsoft is just like, eh, "Just buy Netflix. Why not? Like, we could do that, right?" That's not, and you know, to be fair, I guess Disney did just buy like Hulu not that long ago. So yeah, was it is it Fox? Hulu, yeah, they bought they that. bought the Fox and. Bought a controlling interest in Fox, which brought Hulu with it. But right. yeah, it's uh here. I'll just say this. My opinion. Here's my opinion. Yeah. I remember, because I'm more than five years old, when everybody was surprised and stunned and angry and upset and f- just mocking and flabbergasted at the sheer boggling, like mind boggling amount of money that Apple paid for Beats. Back in the day, as I recall, was yeah. that three billion? Something like that, yeah. I think it was it, yeah, about it was, three billion. And was everyone was like, like oh my gosh, that's so much money to spend on an acquisition. Microsoft has been like, <laughs> every, <laughs> just over the past couple of years, progressively hucking beers at Apple, like, <laughs> hold my beer, hold my beer, hold my beer. And Apple's just like, oh my gosh, dude, you don't have to keep showing me up. <laughs> With these acquisitions, they're just buying so much expensive stuff. And it's to the point where, like, six months ago, if you had said, Microsoft is thinking about buying Netflix, I would have laughed in your face. I'd be like, that's like a $74 billion acquisition. Heck no. Then Bethesda happened, and now Activision Blizzard. And I'm like, oh, uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that could happen. It's hard to say with Microsoft. Not only that, I mean, they Netflix is... 
I guess they lost two hundred thousand subscribers and their stocks tanking and yes, they they like have that. lost a bunch of subscribers and and they keep talking about how it's because people are sharing accounts and I'm like, no Netflix, it's because you're not making things people want to watch. I'm sorry, yep. but that's the actual reason. I was gonna say this would actually be probably a really good thing, good thing for Netflix. Yeah. And the consumer of Netflix. Not necessarily that Probably. the shows are getting it better, but Microsoft doesn't need Netflix to be to make them money. So they wouldn't necessarily raise the prices every year, every two years like Netflix already does. It's I, I feel like like Microsoft would need Netflix to quote unquote make them money, but not necessarily as a standalone right. service that, all yeah, on its own yeah. the way that Netflix is right now. Right. Microsoft would just bundle it in with a whole bunch of other subscriptions to make them all seem like this is way better now because you also get Netflix kind of thing. Kind of the way that Apple has been able to bundle like music and with TV and with games and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So like, yeah, like they would still need it to make money, but just as a part of their portfolio of services. Which yep. they'd be able to just be like, hey, here's the new Office 365 comes with Netflix. Why not? Well, and a little bit more on the back end side, Netflix runs on Amazon's AWS. Oh, so <laughs> and that's a very big chunk. So if they were to do yeah. that, they would move that or that, Azure, with these acquisitions, yeah. with all these things that they're doing, they're moving a lot from AWS. Oh. And obviously Amazon doesn't like but it means that Netflix wouldn't go down as often either. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, ah. as a self-proclaimed hater of Amazon, I'm fully on board with this acquisition. <laughs> Heck yes, Microsoft. Buy Netflix. Well, Microsoft's not too fond of Amazon because Amazon and their, what is it, their government contract, they keep postponing it because Amazon throws a fit. Oh, gosh, yeah. What was it, the Jedi Jedi contract or whatever? Yeah, the one with all the hollow lenses and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, when I first heard this, I was like, wait, what? And then I started <laughs> thinking about it, kind of reading more into it and reading other articles. I was like, well, I mean. Maybe. I mean, I wouldn't mind this personally because I do. So I'm thinking of movies and obviously it'd be nice to have that service. But if it's bundled in with. My one of my subscriptions. I have Office or not? I have Microsoft 365, and I do have Game Pass. We just bundle it in with that stuff. Sweet. But then, how nice would it be that I can watch all my movies that I own, my digital movies, anywhere now? Because the problem is, is Microsoft doesn't have their stuff on Android or anywhere. Yeah. For their for their movies and TV shows. So right. when I buy a movie. I have to go to Google or I have to use the movies anywhere app because I have those links. Yep. So me as a yep. consumer, I'm thinking that would be dope because Netflix is on everything. I, I just, I don't necessarily see them doing something like that because that's not what people think of when they think of Netflix. They don't think, Oh, I'm going to go watch my own movies on Netflix. They think, Oh, I'm going to go watch streaming stuff on Netflix. They also don't think Netflix with games, and yet they're coming out with games. Well, that's like, brand new for Netflix, and Netflix is just seeing all the game stuff blowing up. They oh, this is how we can make more money, when in reality it's going to cost them more money because they're yes. not a gaming company. True. Yeah. True. It's like, Netflix, uh, I, I hate to tell you how to run your business, but I think that the thing you need to do is just accept that you can't actually make money off of this. Uh, you need to be like Apple or like Disney and make money off of something totally unrelated and use your streaming service as a way to sweeten the pot. Oh, wait, sorry, you can't actually do that. Oh, yeah, I See, guess sell to Microsoft. I feel like that's actually... <laughs> well, yeah, and that proves your point, what you were saying. It like, kind of does. Help, help everything there, so... Because you think about all of the big competing streaming services, like Hulu was losing money hand over fist. Now they're a part of Disney. And so you end up with Hulu and like ESPN plus and Disney plus and stuff like that, all kind of wrapped under the same umbrella. All of that exists to sell merchandise and theater tickets on their giant films. And it's like those streaming services probably do like break even in terms of subscription and cost and that sort of thing. But I can pretty much guarantee they're not making a ton of money, but they are driving people to consume other things that are extremely high profit margins that are very lucrative. And in the case of Disney, most of it's probably merchandise. 
and, yeah. and, and brand partnerships and other stuff like that. So like that's what's working for them. Apple has TV plus. I'm sure that TV plus does make them some money, a small amount of money, uh, but it's not going to be huge, but it does drive hardware sales, even though it is available on other platforms. It's going to continually drive people towards the iPhone, towards Apple's devices, which is where they make all of their money from. You look at Amazon. Amazon Prime is not about a streaming. It's not a streaming service. It is an advertising service for buying crap on Amazon <laughs> because that's True. where they make their money from. Like all of these other streaming services are trying to drive their like their consumers towards something else, which is how the company actually makes money with the exception of Netflix. And that's why it costs more to subscribe to Netflix. And that's why like all of these other issues that Netflix has is are so unique to Netflix because they don't have, you know, they're not operating on the same business model as basically anybody else in the space. The only other one that is similar is HBO Max. Yes. And they yeah, act, but they true. actually make make money because they make shows people want to watch. More than one. Well, More than wait, one. Wait, who owns HBO? No. HBO someone... is its own thing, I'm pretty sure. Well, so HBO is as an entertainment conglomerate is owned by Time Warner, I think. Yeah, um, I was going to say they're owned by cuz that's why they were able to get DC stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So is, it's yeah. it's it's one of the but you know Time Warner is again is a media production company and yeah. the stuff that HBO does for HBO Max doesn't actually drive people towards that. Like HBO Max is basically just HBO pivoting from being a like purchase channel on cable to being a purchase subscription kind of thing. Right. So they're operating under yeah. the same business model that they've been operating under for decades. And they're really good at that business model. And and basically they survive off of those subscription costs. And they're quite an expensive subscription because they're really good at making these extremely popular must watch TV phenomenons happen. Like they've yeah. got a lot of experience doing that. Netflix doesn't Netflix is really good at throwing an enormous amount of crap at the wall and occasionally something sticks occasionally sometimes you get a stranger things or the witcher or squid game or whatever but that's uh, in like those for every one of those there's literally a hundred different just piece of garbage tv shows that netflix has produced that just absolutely sucks and nobody wants to watch but they spent money producing it so netflix isn't good at like you know controlling what's being what what they're spending money on the way that hbo is and so i feel like yeah that's it's hbo has the expertise because they're pivoting from being a paid a cable channel to being a paid subscription service and it's a pretty similar thing and then on top of that they do have a large production company in hollywood that is backing them so they can afford to have a year that's not as good as the other years and they have some cushion because of their you know the backing netflix doesn't like netflix is See, alone yeah i look at like apple has taken they've looked at all these different streaming services and they've kind of done what hbo has done where yeah. they don't just throw money at everything and find out what sticks. They're not, I mean, that's what Samsung does or has done with phones in the past. They don't do it as much anymore, but they did for a while. It And Apple never did that with phones either. So Apple has done what Apple does, where they put a lot of money into like five things and make them really good. They get the right people the, and to be able to do the jobs that they know what to do and let them do their jobs. Whereas Netflix yeah. is doing the Samsung thing and they're just throwing all the money to all the people, whether they know what they're doing or not, and say, here, make a show. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, then they're just losing money, which obviously is the case. Yeah. Yep. And it's it's so. very much the kind of thing where like I, I just and and actually Netflix that so they lost subscribers. They didn't actually lose money over the past year. They still turned a gross profit. Um, overall because of the increase in subscription cost. Um, but, but, you know, I just, I, I just look at like, I watched the Witcher. I absolutely loved it. That, uh, League of Legends TV show. What the crap was that called? I can't even remember, but it's really good. Loved that show. It was a work of art, listener, a work of art. But, between those two, between watching The Witcher and watching the League of Legends show, I, I was like, oh, hey, look, 
Netflix, they, they did a reboot of, of reboot, like the old, you know, computer generated kids show from when I was I a kid. I remember that. And, and I'm like, oh, reboot. Like, I would, I, a, a reboot of reboot is honestly kind of a fun idea. I, I'm going to check that. It was awful. Oh, was it? Oh, my no. Gosh, it's so bad. I didn't even finish the first episode because, like, it, it it's live action and the the actors are awful. It's it's like the worst thing you ever saw on Disney Channel, except without any of the quality of even the Disney Channel. Like it's <laughs> it's so bad. And and then they it's then they go action. into the computer like it's Digimon and they're entering the digital world or whatever. And <laughs> the way that they integrate the live action into the computer generated in the computer bits, which speaking of which the computer generated bits honestly look like they could have come from the era of the original TV show back in the like mid nineties. <laughs> so fetching, it was bad, but then like the way that they were integrating the, the live action characters into that was by doing the most blatant ripoff of the Iron Man face cam that I've ever seen. It just, it just, everything about it was uninspired and just awful to watch. It made me kind of sick. So that that's your problem. Netflix. You have a lot of really good content, but for every good piece of content that you have, you are spending money on bankrolling a lot of trash. Stop it. And and, and I think you'll find your money problems will solve themselves. <laughs> that sucks. Oof. Thanks. Uh, I did do a quick search. I wanted to see if uh, our HBO prediction was right, if they were owned by Time Warner, which they are. But Time Warner is actually owned by AT&T. Oh, oh, that oh, yeah, that is right. I, that's I that mean, that's the reason I have HBO Max is because I have AT and T. That sandwich has more layers to it than I thought. I forget yeah. that that's a recent thing that happened like the, in, within the last year that AT and T bought the Time Warner stuff. Yeah, good so, grief! There's that. So that's even more money, I guess. Large media companies buying other large media companies. I can see why Microsoft would want to get in on this. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I'd rather them than, like, Comcast. Oh, please. Please. I hate Comcast so <laughs> much. Comcast owned by NBC? No, Comcast owns NBC. Yeah. Or, Comcast yeah. is the parent oh. company there. Yeah, Comcast is the is the top of their particular totem pole. And it's really sad because if you look at the Venn diagram of every production company in, like, Holly, in the world, basically, you have the Comcast bubble, you have the Disney bubble, and then you have, I guess, the AT&T bubble now. I thought it was Time Warner before, but I guess it's yeah. AT&T now. And, and that's it. Everybody is owned by one of those three companies with a very small sliver of, like, a few other things scattered around the outside. And it, and actually, at this point, Netflix is one of the things scattered around the outside. So, like, good for them for being independent for as long as they have. And like you said, if they're going to get built by anybody, I would much rather have it be a Microsoft or a Google than a Comcast or a Disney. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's do that. Fair enough. Well, I mean, that's what we a I asked for for your opinions. Anyone have anything else on that before we move on? No, I'm, I'm good. Okay. I've now ranted enough uh, sufficiently <laughs> on this particular topic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a nice little warning light go off in the corner of my screen that's all like rant finished. <laughs> rant finished. <laughs> that's awesome. All right. Um, this isn't too big of news, but I thought that it's worth mentioning for anyone that has any kind of apps or anything they're trying to put on the Windows 10 or 11 store. Uh, Microsoft will no longer ban paid open source apps in its store. Can Microsoft afford to ban any apps from its store? <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for something like that. Uh, so, that's yeah, I mean, question. apparently there there was, I mean, a lot of people say yay for this, which, okay. I guess they, they were looking into stop that uh, because they were just worried about, like, just clone apps everywhere. But, I mean, if you look at the store, there's clone apps everywhere. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Stores. So, yeah, I, don't know. I mean, I think that's fair. Yeah, I don't. It, the The concept of paid open source apps to me is so that's like listener, just so that you understand what we're talking about here. A, open source obviously means that it is available for everybody to use free of charge, right? Like open source 
it usually applies to a code base in terms of software kind of thing. So the open office uh, code base is an open source project that was worked on for many, many years and was then bought by Sun Microsystems. And Sun Microsystems kind of killed it, which is weird. It was it was so bizarre. They bought it and then murdered it. And nobody understands quite why they bought it in the first place. Like, don't get it. But because the code base was open source, like, you know, Sun Microsystems owned the concept of open office. But mm-hmm. uh, everybody else was able to be like, OK, we're just going to take the code base and make something that's basically the same, but is free. And it's called LibreOffice. And so that's kind of what you have now. And so you can take the code base for a lot of these apps and take that code base, implement it into your own piece of software and then do something novel with it and then charge for that. You're not really charging for the open source piece of that app. Anybody can take that and do whatever the crap they want with it and you can't control them. You can't stop them. You're just charging for what you've done on top of that, you know? And so that's like what a paid quote unquote open source app is. And yeah. I, it's it's a thing that I have kind of a weird relationship with, because for me personally, I'm like, why don't you just go use the actual open source app? You know, like. <laughs> like all of the uh, the apps that are basically just skins over OBS that, yeah. you know, are supposed <laughs> yeah. to make it easier to use or whatever. Like, I'm just like, just go use OBS. It's free. You don't have to pay 20 bucks for it or whatever. But at the same time. The setup can be a little opaque and the interface can be a little obtuse and stuff like that. And that tends to be true of a lot of open source software. So I understand that there is a market for this. And I guess it makes sense that why why would Microsoft ban something like that, I guess, you know. So, yeah, fair. Yeah. So figured mention something like that. So, But that's kind of really all the news on Microsoft's end that's really I wanted to talk about, like I said. Uh, more features, more stuffs coming to Windows 11. On there, I wish I wish I had a something to be like, yay, it's actually pretty cool or not, but I don't have it on my <laughs> PC. So, all right, well, let's go ahead and let's move on. Uh, let's go ahead, uh, Landon. You got a couple things you want to talk about? Let's let's go ahead and dive in. All right, I have some news from Google. Um, yay! They officially announced the Pixel 6a phone. Yay! Um, yay! Maybe. Yay. I don't know. <laughs> Tell me about it. Well, let's just go over some specs really quick. So the main thing here that everyone's talking about is this has the same processor in it as the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, that being Google's own Tensor chip. So this is now more similar slash on par with what Apple is doing with the iPhone SE where they're putting the latest uh, processor in some older hardware to, and to make it a little cheaper. But the fact that it has the latest processor is what the big is. The big deal here means it will last a lot longer than other phones in the same price range. Um, the display on this is a 6.1 inch 1080p 60 Hertz OLED display. It has 6 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, a 4,400 milliamp hour battery, and it is obviously uh, running Android uh, 11. That's the one that we're currently on, correct? Yeah. 12? 12? I think third. I don't know. I thought it was 11. I'm glad somebody else knows this or is confused by this. I, I have no or- idea. <laughs> I can barely keep track of what version of iOS I'm on. I know, I'm the same way. I mean, now that they got rid of names, it's not as easy to, you know, numbers are harder in this sense. Um, Yeah, that's true. But they are going to guarantee five years of security updates and I believe four years of OS updates, so that's nice. Camera-wise, it's got a front camera. This is an 8-megapixel camera. On the back is a 12-megapixel. The regular sensor is a 12-megapixel sensor. And then has the ultra wide, which is also 12 megapixels. Um, comes in three different colors: sage, which is like a green color; chalk, which is white; and charcoal, which is black, like Caleb's soul. And it has a IP rating of IP67, so not quite as high as their main flagships, but still pretty good. And the starting price is four hundred and fifty dollars. So. Uh, basically on par with what the A-series has been in the past. 
But like I said, this is the main selling feature here is the Tensor chip. And obviously, if you're in, like, if you like the stock Android type feel, this is going to have that. So, like I said, it's it's on par, in my opinion, with how Apple is running their SE phones, where you're getting the main, the high-end processor with the same same operating system experience between all the phones. But the rest of the hardware is going to be on the lesser side. Like, it does have the two cameras on the back, which is nice. But these are the older sensors. These are not the same sensors that are on the newer 6 and 6 Pro, the nicer sensors. That being said, these are the same sensors that Google has been using since, I'm pretty sure, since the Pixel 2. So, I mean, yes, it's an older sensor. But as Google has proven, they've done really good work with these sensors, with their software and stuff, to come with to bring out really good pictures. So it's not really that much of a downgrade from what the 6 and 6 Pro are giving. So that's pretty nice. Um, All the reviews that I've seen so far from this phone are pretty good, Um, especially for the price. $450 for this phone is a pretty good deal. It's the only thing people are struggling with right now is the long-term satisfaction of this phone because of the pixel 6 and 6 pro been somewhat buggy from what i understand i think they've started to get better with some updates recently some of the bugs that have been there are starting to go away but that is something that people are a little hesitant on recommending like this like the google the a series was always like the go-to recommendation even for me if you didn't want to pay flagship prices for an Android phone, this is the one that I would always recommend people because you're going to have really good experience and a really good camera for a really good price. And I still think that's going to be mostly the case. But again, with how the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro have been, it is a little more up in the air on that. And now with the the nothing phone one, potentially like in the same price range, the camera is not going to be as good. But the operating system experience is going to be very similar because it's basically a stock Android experience on that. And then you also get that cool light show on the back of the phone, you know, because that's more fun. (laughs) So, you know, there and that that phone also has a better display on the Nothing Phone one. It's got the 120 hertz display, whereas this is only 60 hertz. And also the, the interesting thing is with this phone is... Like that display, some reviews that I've seen, people, it just isn't, it doesn't seem as smooth. Everything is running fine. Like with that Tensor chip, everything runs fast and works great. But it just doesn't feel as smooth as what people are saying. And it's it's kind of, it's one of those things that's hard to describe and explain. But when you use it, you understand. I, I totally get it. Yeah, you feel it. And like people are comparing this to other phones that have a 60 Hertz display. So it's not like people are going from a 120 Hertz display to this because that I can understand. But if you're comparing it to other 60 Hertz displays and it still feels like that, that's kind of an issue. Yeah. It is something that could be fixed with updates potentially, but it's, I don't know. It might even be just as simple as like animation tweaks that they need to make to the interface or something like that. But yeah, it is kind of a shame that that's how it, it shipping like especially to reviewers. Yeah, I don't know. Not great. Not a great look. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. I'm still. It's probably still going to be the phone that I recommend to most people that don't want to spend flagship prices because it is a Pixel. You're going to be getting those security updates, which is better than almost anybody else although samsung now is basically on par when it comes to both security and os updates with google so you could get a galaxy a series phone for around the same price you may not get as good a cameras on that thing as you will with this and it's going to have samsung's skin on top of android which i'm not a fan of but a lot (laughs) of people are because the a galaxy a phones are their number one selling phone by far. So obviously a lot of people like that. I 
don't understand, but they do. So, I mean, I still think this will be my recommendation for those people, but it's we'll have to wait and see basically how the long-term you know, usability of this phone is. But if you want to pre-order it, you can. I do not know when it comes in store, like when it'll be available just to go to a store and buy. Probably next week is my guess, or later this week. But either way, it is now available for $450. So if you were waiting on this, there you go. Now you can buy it. Looking at this, does it have, uh, you know how the Pixel 6 and the 6 Pro have that wraparound screen on the edges? Look at the pictures here. Do you know if that one does the same? Or nope. if it's like actually like the Pixel 5? No, this is actually better in that sense because it is a flat display. At least I think it's better. Not no, everyone I, does. I, I agree. I like the flat personally yeah. as well, so that's why I was looking at it. Yeah, this does have a flat display, so that is nice. And I'm really hoping that Google goes back to that with their higher-end phones, but we'll see. Yeah, I was, I, was, I, was look, I was comparing the stuff between the Pixel 5 and the Pixel 6a and seeing uh, the differences and things and uh, seeing where that, you know, where that goes. But yeah, I mean, if you're coming from a Pixel 5, I don't think this, I mean, this is going to be an upgrade just for the fact that it has the Tensor chip in it rather than the previous A series phone. Like if you're going from a 4 to a 5a, I don't necessarily think that would have been a huge update because you're going from a flagship processor to a mid-level processor from Qualcomm, which mm-hmm. isn't a huge jump, but it's enough that you would probably notice a little bit of a slowdown. But with this one, you're going from a flagship processor from Qualcomm to the flagship processor from Google. And from what I understand, the processor has definitely not been the problem with the 6 series of phones. So going from the 5 to the 6A, I think would probably still be a decent experience when it comes to hardware. But again, yeah, it looks like it's it's pretty minimal, uh, meaning like, so, you know, battery difference is 480 milliamp to, uh, you know, 4400, uh, 4, like you were saying. Right. Uh, the RAM is different. Uh 8 gig to 6, but it's faster at the 6 if it's the new one. So, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I don't think most things are going to be that big of a deal for you. It's going to have the same camera that you that the 5 has. So, you're not losing out there. Um, Yeah, I, I honestly think this wouldn't be that... I don't think it would be a downgrade, I'll say that. And it would potentially be a slight upgrade just because of the processor in it. But again... The software is where the issues may come into play just because of what's happened with the 6 and 6 Pro. Just, I mean, I would not pre-order this phone at the moment. I would wait to see even like the one-month review of this type of this thing. Right. Or maybe a couple months out, you know, just yep. to see where things are going with it. So hopefully they've kind of fixed a lot of those things with the 6 and 6 Pro and they're, this one will just be smooth sailing but I can't guarantee anything because <laughs> you never know. I guess with a correction on what we were saying earlier uh, this is from Google's site it actually says it will launch with Android 12. Really? Instead of Android 11. Yeah, it's, it says It's on the site here. It says we'll launch Android 12. Nice. On the store. So that's a good thing. So I guess that means Android 12 will be coming out shortly to everyone. So that's kind of cool. All right. Now, the other thing that Google launched along with this phone is the Pixel Buds Pro. Now, I believe they announced these a little while ago at I.O., if I remember correctly. But now they yeah. are available to purchase. Um Pre-orders started this past week, and they will be in stores on July 28th, and they cost $200. Um, from what I understand, they seem to be, like, if you're if you're wanting some really good earbuds from Google, these are the ones to get. Um, they're going to have all your fancy features, active noise canceling, uh, transparency mode, 
Um, from what I understand, the gestures on him are really nice. Like the touch uh, part of it is going to be really good. I haven't seen any like official reviews. It's mostly just been hands on things from IO and whatnot that people are putting out or have put out. So there's no, not that I've seen yet. Anyways, there haven't been any official reviews for these. I'm sure that'll come out this week. I kind of find it weird that they didn't put, allow that to come out before the pre-order or at least yeah. the same day as the pre-order, like normal. So that has me a little skeptical because generally when a company doesn't let you put your review out before a pre-order, at least or at least the same day as a pre-order, they might be hiding something or don't yep. want it to get out. I don't know. That's That's been Intel's MO for the past few years. So <laughs> Yes. Ooh, I mean, man. the one example I can think of as well is, sorry, Wes, but the Surface Duo, <laughs> um, everyone yeah. was allowed to put out a hardware review before pre-orders came out and then they could put out the software review and a full review about the phone and everyone loved the hardware because the hardware was great but then they used the device and it was not so yes. keep that in mind listener that I'm sure these will be decent earbuds at least I'm hoping so, especially for that price. But we'll have to wait and see how reviews go. I am actually very curious because I'm in the market for some earbuds. I actually did just buy some the Jobber Elite 7 Pro earbuds. And they're really nice. I will give them that. But they're just not exactly what I want. There's just a few little things that are annoying enough for me in my specific use case that I'm probably going to return them and wait to see what else comes out. That's another conversation to have some other time. So, like I said, if you, I think the Google, the Pixel Buds Pro are going to be really nice to have if you have a Pixel phone. S- similar to like if you have an iPhone, AirPods are going to be a great earbud to use. Um, these will work with other phones. Same with AirPods, they will work with other phones, but it's obviously more. They're geared to people that use the pixel phone. So right. I'm, I'm, I don't know exactly what features you could potentially be losing out on. If you have this different Android phone, I know you're obviously going to be losing out on some features. If you have an iPhone, I mean, they'll work fine, but it's going to be like, if you're using AirPods with an Android phone, just not quite the best experience, not bad, but not as good. Yeah. So I don't know exactly how that plays out with if you had a Samsung phone with these earbuds. Again, wait for reviews to see how they are. But, you know, they do come in uh, four different colors. They have coral, which is like a salmon-y pink, like, you know, type color. Lemongrass, which is an interesting name, but is like a (laughs) greenish-yellow color. Fog, which is like gray. And then charcoal, which is darker gray or <laughs> as they may call it black um so that's what google came out with this past week um again look at reviews before you buy potentially long-term reviews before you buy the phone but good stuff i think overall i think though the best thing that came out of this pixel 6a announcement did not come from google <laughs> um this is now two weeks in a row that I have to give some praise to D brand skins. Yeah. Last week they came out with the something skins, making fun of nothing, and I so absolutely good. loved those skins. And if I didn't if I had a Pixel phone, this will work with the Pixel 6, 6A and 6 Pro. If I had any of these phones, I would be purchasing this you know, right now. But I don't, and it actually would give me a reason to switch back to the Pixel because (laughs) it's fantastic. So This is all the reason you need, really. I mean, (laughs) yes. If you are thinking about purchasing any of the the newer Pixel phones, here's your reason to do so. Dbrand came out with some new skins that very well utilize the camera bar that Google has on these phones. And so the top and bottom, like the glass top and bottom of the phones are this green, really nice green color. And then the the bar for the camera 
you can either get in red, blue, orange, and purple. Now, if you aren't picturing this and you don't know what I'm talking about, go back to the 90s when, you know, great things were happening, including the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. D-Brand is calling this Teenage Mutant Ninja Pixels. And you absolutely need to look up a picture of this listener because it's fantastic. So Especially good. if you're looking at the Pixel 6 devices that just have the two cameras or even the Pixel 6a because those ones look better than what the Pro phone has because that has more sensors and more cutouts. Yeah. But, man, they look... <laughs> I mean, if you were to make, like, just a very... No, I don't even know the term, but just a very basic type picture of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles where all you're looking at is the color and the headband. <laughs> that's what this is. That's that's it's, what it is. This is the one bit version of, of the Teenage Mutant Ninja yeah, Turtles where it's like it three is. pixels is all you've got to, to make it look like them. That's what this is. And it works really darn well. <laughs> it works so well. It is so good. And I absolutely love it. And like I said, This alone has made me want, kind of wish that I had a Pixel 6 phone because Mm -hmm. it's fantastic. And I'm I'm a person that does use a case on my phone. This, if I had a Pixel and a case, I would take the case off to put these skins on and just carry my phone like that because it looks so great. Yep. And that made me really happy this week is eBrand once again being fantastic good job d brand yeah you win very good job once again all right now on to some other news non-google related ish mostly i mean android but not google (laughs) samsung has announced their next galaxy unpacked event will be august 10th and i really think based on what this event has turned into they need to have their first event that usually is in February of the of the year be the unpacked event. And then this August event can be the unfold event because hmm. it is now turned into their folding phone <laughs> event. And that would be much more fun. It's not going to happen, but I wish it would. So Galaxy Unpacked, August 10th, we are expecting uh, new folding phones. The Galaxy Z Fold 4, Galaxy Z Flip 4, and also the Galaxy Watch 5 and Watch 5 Pro, I suppose, is going to be a thing, and Mm -hmm. Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. I don't know why they couldn't do Galaxy Buds Pro 2, but they did a Galaxy (laughs) Buds 2 Pro. I I mean, I'm hoping that they're going to be better than the original Galaxy Buds Pro, because from what I understand, the material used in the Galaxy Buds Pro were causing some people to have major reactions in their ears to those earbuds. Which is great. Which That's is exactly just... what you want for something that goes right up against the skin for yep. multiple hours at a time. Yep. So hopefully they've fixed that problem with the earbuds. I mean, I <laughs> own the very first pair of Galaxy Buds, and I've really liked them. They've been really nice. Um. I haven't purchased, I obviously haven't purchased any since then because I haven't been as impressed with other versions that Samsung has come out with, at least again, for my specific wants and needs in earbuds, but they've always got really good reviews other than the skin issue that the Galaxy Buds Pro first gen had (laughs) for uh, not everyone, obviously, but for enough people that I would not recommend buying them. Um, but it's, the it's Galaxy... kind of like just how not every Note Seven exploded, but enough of them did that you were like, mm. <laughs> I, I mean, Samsung has they still sell the Galaxy Buds Pro, so there is that. <laughs> I mean, these... that's because the TSA didn't ban it, so you know, <laughs> that's, like that's they, fair. they don't care if you've got rashes in your ears, whatever. That that is that is fair. It, yeah, they're not blowing <laughs> up. They're not killing people at least not in the same way a note would (laughs) but yeah but anyways i mean obviously the important thing for this event is going to be the fold four and the flip four 
Um, so that's something to look forward to. Again, August 10th is when the event is going to be. And I believe they said 9 a.m. Eastern time. So if you want to watch it, that's the time it will be. I probably will not be watching because Samsung's events have been meh the last yeah. few years. They they were starting to get really good for a while, and then they have kind of plateaued slash dropped on the other side of that plateau a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> so their events aren't as fun anymore. Anyways. Dang. All right. Another event that has been announced as well from Motorola. They will be announcing a new Razer phone, so another foldable phone from them. And as well, they're going to be announcing the Moto X30 Pro. They've already said this. And that's going to be a high-end flagship device from Motorola. So it's been a minute since they've had one of those. Hopefully, it's actually pretty good. But obviously, everyone is more excited for the Motorola Razr. Because, obviously, this will be on August 2nd. So they are beating Samsung, which is probably good for them. That they're (laughs) going to be out before... The new fold and flip phones come out. Um, I'm really looking forward to this because I've been a fan of the Razer flip phone. Um, I have actually seen. Okay, I actually know somebody that has a Moto Razer, and I know somebody that has a Galaxy Z Flip Three. They both work with me ish. They're on different shifts, but they work with me, and so I see them on a fairly regular basis. Both phones are really cool. I'm a fan. But I, the thing I love about the Razer is just it's nostalgia for one. And it actually, in my opinion, has the better outside screen. And it's also thinner, which is really cool. Yeah. Now, the downside to the Razer over the past couple of years has been the specs are not flagship specs. But you're still paying like 1000 to $1,200 for the phone. This one, the rumors are that this is going to have flagship specs in it. So hopefully that is the case. And hopefully that doesn't mean the price goes up $500. (laughs) I mean, Samsung has got the flip series phones down. I want to say the, the the flip three was a thousand bucks. Uh, It started at 1100. I think it was at 11. Either way, that's not ridiculous. That's not ridiculous when it comes to normal flagship phones of the, of, you know, now. Yeah. As sad as that is, it's, it's really unfortunate, but (laughs) Comparing to other flagship phones, that's on par. Whereas, like the Fold, because it's got the bigger screen and all that stuff, it's still like fifteen hundred bucks. At least it was. So, hopefully, Motorola can add these higher end specs and keep the price close to that thousand dollars starting point. Yeah, especially if they want to compete with Samsung and the Flip Four, they've got to be able to do something like that. Yeah. I just, the industrial design of the Razer is just so good. It is, it just looks good and just so thin. Looks like it would feel just like an incredibly impressive piece of engineering in the hand. And yeah, the nostalgia is great and all, but I never owned a Moto Razer back in the day. I just liked the way they looked. And this, it's that, oh, so good. So yeah, I want them. I really want them to succeed with this because I want them to... Uh, you know, if there's going to be a phone that's going to convince me to ditch the iPhone, yeah, that might be it. <laughs> Just because it looks so dope. Yeah. I, yeah, I really want, I want them to succeed as well for multiple reasons. One, we need more than just Samsung in the folding phone market. And right now, I mean, there are other people in that sphere, but <laughs> Samsung sort of. owns it because they've got the really good hardware and the, I mean, as much as I am not a fan of Samsung software experience, it isn't horrible anymore. And they've actually, when it comes to especially the Fold with that bigger screen, they've got that experience down pretty good as well. So Samsung right now is top of the tier when it comes to these phones. So I'm really wanting Motorola to up their, step up their game and make a really good device. And we need more like I want the X30 Pro that they're announcing as well to be good as well because we need more phones in that flagship sphere. Motorola does a really good job when it comes to that sub $300 phone, 
they're selling those really, really good, especially outside of the U.S. Those phones are everywhere. So they've already got that. I'm assuming those phones make them at least some money. They're obviously still in business. It's not LG where they've, you know, gone Um, away. But Motorola is still there. So hopefully they can get back into this flagship part of the market and do something with it. But we shall see. That is all of my news for this week. Really good news. Actually, I'm still looking at that pixel. <laughs> and the, <laughs> I was kind of looking at the earbuds as well, just kind of seeing stuff. So I'm interested. I guess I, the big thing is that screen. Like, that's probably why I didn't get a Pixel 6 or a Pro. Like, even trying to get spring, 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 screen protectors for those, they don't make them. They basically, you use that, uh, heated stuff that you put on the and it, what is it like a gel on the screen mm. and i can't remember what that's called but it's like a heated gel you put on there yeah. and a lot of people don't like that because it messes with that screen so i like the flat screen. yeah anyway all right well let's go ahead and move on uh caleb i believe you might have something for us to talk about well, I just have gaming. I, I actually have no tech news. Um, no tech news. Know. All right. I well, let's, like so- Apple exists. They still <laughs> sell phones. I, over the past week, Apple has sold approximately seventy-five million iPhones. Um, like every minute, I think. I, I don't know. It's it's some absurdly high rate of sale for the iPhone, and uh, that's yep. That continues yep. to be the case. No, I don't know. They have there's there's rumors and stuff, but nothing really interesting. Just at this point, we just keep getting like rehashes of like, yeah, we're pretty sure that the next version of the iPhone is like not going to have the uh, telescoping uh, zoom lens on the camera system. That's for the iPhone. After that, we're also pretty sure that the iPhone 14 is not going to get the same processor as the 14 Pro and stuff like that. And I'm just like. I I just don't like the Apple right now with the iPhone, so no. <laughs> so I just have some gaming news is all. Well, I mean, why don't you go ahead and lead us off into some gaming news? I do have one thing I wanted to mention on that too. But so at least you start us off. All right. Uh, so I'm going to start off with game release. Now, we've talked about this game in the past, listener, when it was first announced last year. It's called Stray from Annapurna Interactive. They're the publishers of it. Uh, and it is a game in which you play as a cat. You are you are a stray cat, and you are doing cat things. Um, that's that's the, the game. Apparently, it's extremely good. <laughs> like, rave reviews. Everybody who has played it absolutely loved it. To be clear, all of the reviews I have seen were from people that were extremely excited about the concept of playing a game as a cat. So, like, they're all cat people. They all love cats. They just like cute little fluffy animals and whatever. And that's why they were attracted to the game. And if that's what you're after, apparently this is extremely good. So if it sounds fun to you, like, oh, I get to run around as a cat and like, you know, do the meowing and the flopping over on people's lap and stuff that cats do. Oh, okay. (laughs) Here's a game for you. It's really good. Uh, You know, it is. I would rather do that in real life than on a game. (laughs) Go around it's meowing, flapping on people's lap, you know, just pushing stuff off counters. It certainly has the appeal of of being a little bit more surprising, I feel like. So, yeah, like that that's valid. Um, I will say the game is currently a PlayStation 5 exclusive. And apparently one of the big things that they put a lot of effort into was the haptic feedback on the DualSense controller, which like purring and stuff like that. When the cat purrs, then obviously you get haptic feedback through the controller for that. Evidently that is just outstandingly well done. So it's, if you want kind of a, yeah, like a, a, a technical showcase of the haptics inside of the dual sense controller, this is apparently a pretty good game for that. So, you know, but if you're into that, then it's cool. It go. If you're into that and you have a PlayStation five, I feel like it's important to make sure that, yeah, that you have to have both. And a haptic controller. Uh, well, you know, the DualSense 5 comes with the PlayStation 5. So if you've got the PS5, you've got the DualSense, and you're set. Yeah. But it's 
Like you're, you know, you if you want that experience, you have to get the game and a PS5. And I feel like that one's probably a little bit harder. Maybe. Um, okay. So next, this is we have also listener talked about the uh, what appears to be a full reboot of the Saints Row franchise. Uh, we talked about that. Uh, was it wasn't? Uh, was it Gamescom? I think it was Gamescom when when they first announced that. And I had the opinion at the time, listener, of uh, this looks like it's going to be a quote unquote pared back, down to earth, more realistic take on the Saints Row franchise, which was disappointing to me because we have that already. It's called Grand Theft Auto and we don't need another one. I don't ah, like the first Saints Row was just not as good as the rest of them. Because that's what it was trying to be. It was just a generic crime sim. And it was kind of dumb. Like, it's the kind of thing where, like, they're lucky it sold well enough that they could make a second one. And then the second one, they started making it a little bit more bombastic and crazy and absurd. And then they just rolled with that because people were buying it and liked it. And that's and you ended up with Saints Row 4, where you start the game off by thwarting a nuclear missile launch. Then you get elected president of the United States. Then the con- the world's invaded by aliens and gets blown up. And then you have to kill all the aliens in a computer simulation. It's uh, <laughs> Saints Row 4. Is no. is is an incredible example of what happens when you give a game development company a whole bunch of money and say, you know what, just do the weirdest thing you can think of. And that's what Saints Row 4 is. Now, I was really concerned when we saw the initial trailer for Saints Row, the reboot, uh, that they were going to just pull back and do a Saints Row 1 again. And I was like, uh, I don't want to wait four games for it to get good again, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> not a big fan. So this past week, journalists have actually been able to get their hands on some pre-release gameplay for the very beginning of Saints Row. And based on a few clips and videos and impressions that I have seen, heard, and read, it sounds like this might actually be more bonkers than (laughs) 4. It's just... It's... So, you know, on the one hand, they they released their, uh, their character creator, um... They they actually have that you can for free. You can go download that on the Epic Game Store right now and give it a try if you want. It's called the the Saints Row Boss Maker or something like that, where you get to make your boss, your player character for the game. And I've played around with that, and it is everything good about this the character creators for Saints Row 3 and Saints Row 4. Uh they just have a whole lot more options, like extremely robust options for like prosthetic limbs and that sort of thing. Like pretty cool uh and now instead of having a couple of skin types that are metallic and highly reflective you actually can control the reflectiveness no matter what your skin type or color is so that's kind of cool you can make it look like you have metallic anything skin which is is great instead of just metallic green and blue and silver and gold so you know like there's stuff like that it's it's pretty cool uh they've just kind of turned that up to 11 but apparently Apparently the game starts off uh, with you. So you're not necessarily like a a street tough at the very beginning of the game. You're a mercenary who has been hired by this company. And then you immediately get dropped into a old West theme park where you're trying to chase down a bad guy who's cosplaying as like a, a cattle baron or something like that. Anyways, it's just a really weird situation, an extremely bizarre setup, and uh it looks all about it. It it's it's yeah, it looks really weird. It looks wacky, it looks wild, and I'm kind of like, you know what? Uh that I might actually be on board for that. Apparently too. So drop in, drop out co op for the entire campaign is there. That's the thing that was on Saints Row three and four that obviously you have to keep that going. It's a really cool feature. Um but evidently, when you're in co-op with somebody, you can pull pranks on each other. And the, the article that I saw didn't actually, they the, they were not able to figure out how they did this. They don't know what the prank actually was, but they managed to accidentally pull a prank on the person they were playing with that made them stink, made them smell bad. So they would run through the game with like odor wafting off of them and like they'd run past NPCs and they'd start hurling their cookies all over the pavement and that kind of thing. So like... 
it's just weird stuff, which is what I would expect from Saints Row 4. And that's what they're giving us. Um, You know, it's going to be, quote unquote, more down to earth in that you don't have literal superpowers in this version of the game. But they are giving you a wingsuit so you can still kind of fly around the uh, the world and stuff like that. And I'm like, OK, 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 Volition, you've got my attention again. I, I might buy this like day one because it looks really good. <laughs> that's awesome. So. Just- have a little interest in that as well. I never, I, I've always appreciated the Saints Row. I never got into playing it, but uh, Saints Row Four is is everything Crackdown Three should have been. That's what Saints Row Four is. Ah, it's it's very much like because Saints Row Three was just like more insane Saints Row Two, which was just more insane Grand Theft Auto kind of thing, right. and then Saints Row Four kind of was all like, you know what, Crackdown had some really cool ideas, like the first Crackdown, <laughs> yeah. and so they just stole all of them. It's you go grab orbs, upgrade your superpowers and stuff inside of this computer simulation. And and it's fun. You can ground pound people and fly and it's awesome. And so, you know, obviously they weren't going to do that again. Right. They had to kind of tone it back from that. But it looks like they've gone back maybe as far as Saints Row 3 in terms of like toning it down, quote unquote. But Saints Row 3 is a game in which you you know, one of the activities that you do on the regs in order to make money and whatnot in the game is called insurance fraud when you just run out into the street and get hit by cars. And and then you collect money every time you get hit by a car. And if you're doing it right, the more times you get hit, the further you fly and you can chain these things together and get launched like a half mile into the sky and across the entire map. And it's, yeah, so it looks like that might be as far back as they actually toned it down so we're, we're all good saints row you and me we're back on speaking terms i'm i'm, I'm looking forward to this he's loving it good all right uh now overwatch it's been a little while since we've talked about overwatch on the the podcast listener uh the overwatch 2 most recent beta just finished up this past week um so they're gonna obviously take what they have learned from that beta they're gonna roll it into some more changes i think think they have one more set of betas set to run before they actually launch the game in October, but they may do an open beta at next. I'm, I'm not sure. So it's been closed betas up to this point. Next one might be open. I can't remember what they've said about that, but that's not actually what I want to talk about. The Overwatch League this past, uh, in fact, just yesterday as of recording. So Saturday, the uh, 23rd of July. They had the finals for their midseason madness tournament, which is the second tournament of season five of the Overwatch League. And the L.A. Gladiators won again. So this is a very self-congratulatory moment of the podcast. It just looks like it's actually a really good year to be a Gladiators fan, which as a person who's been a Gladiators fan since 2018, can I just say about freaking time? (laughs) Seriously, guys. (laughs) It's, they're Get very it. much they're very much a team that like for the entire time all of the analysts and casters have been saying oh the talent on this roster they're so good they should be a top three team they haven't been oh my gosh they're in like maybe the middle of the pack if not outright the bottom <laughs> like it took them so long to take a, a good bunch of players and turn them into a good team that doesn't just have good moments they have good entire games and then good entire tournament brackets like it just hasn't happened for the gladiators before so i'm really excited about that they've now won both of the tournaments so far this season and uh they look like they might actually be a favorite for taking the championship so that happened yesterday and i'm very happy about it so i figured i i'm gonna share you know it's been a while since we've talked about overwatch True. true All right. Beta? I did not get into the beta. No, that's not I, last I time, did. not this time. Oh, did got you? In. Ooh. I'm. I want to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, okay. Um, Is it a little too fast paced for you, Wes? Can you not play Reinhardt in every game? And, and it's just sad. No, no. Well, I, I mean, I'm going to be honest. So. Basically, everyone wants to play a tank or DPS, so the only time I could get in is support. Oh, so, fair. The, the meta, it, it's, well, obviously, this is a beta, so there's not really a meta, but there kind of is. But it's, it, it's really hard. So as a Mercy player, I guess, you know, 
uh, for mine, I, it she feels really different. So it's really it's too easy to break the not really line of sight, if you will, for the healing, but it's it's too easy as I look somewhere and then all of a sudden it moves over to someone else or yeah, like, no, don't break the I beam. wanted to heal that person. It doesn't lock as hard. And and the buttons see what's weird is is so like when I go, what sucks is when so someone dies and then my ability I can resurrect when I fly to the person, they've made it to where you so normally she has a, a jump you can do if you fly to a person and then jump. So fly really high. Well I fly in to go resurrect, and then I jump, and then I lose my res. <laughs> so, like, I go into res, but then it registers that I'm trying to do a jump, and it just... So then I lose the res, team wipe. That's just a bug. I mean, come on. That surely is a bug at this point. Uh, well, like, a lot of people, a lot of Mercy players are like, that's... You need to fix that. Yeah. And, <laughs> but, and like, but, like... But the feels... And maybe it's it's me, and I don't know. It, it is faster, but... Like, I don't know. It, it's really hard because it's just I die way too easy. If there is anything that I think we can concretely say after the past couple of weeks of the Overwatch League, it's that Overwatch 2 requires a lot more effort to have a coordinated team feel. Yes. With Overwatch 1, things moved at a more uh, methodical pace in a way that it was easier to kind of just accidentally group up and function as a team. Whereas yep. Overwatch 2, things move a lot faster and it has to be, it's it's way more effort needs to be put into coordination in order to actually have coordination. And yep. I say that, like I say that that's pretty obvious to anybody watching the Overwatch League because over the past four weeks or so, every single day of Overwatch League play, there's at least one match where there's some kind of major c9 moment where everybody from one team just steps away from the objective and loses it like if they're alive they're not like they're not all dead they're not pushed away they're not forced away from the point for whatever reason they just get distracted by something they don't coordinate somebody standing on the objective very well and they all leave and they lose the map because they just walked away yeah and it, that happens so frequently. I, it, it, like I said, I think it's pretty easy to say at this point that Overwatch 2 requires a lot more effort to be placed into effective coordination than Overwatch 1 did. So, yeah, I, I, I think I can totally understand what you're saying there. It's like it's going to feel way more. It's, it's just going to feel less satisfying, I think. Yeah, I when think, your team I think that's it. It's... just doesn't work together because they just won't. So, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the game develops. Like they may very well be able to do some some balance tweaks or, you know, minor behind the scenes changes that will kind of fix that a little bit. And like I said, after the past couple of weeks of the Overwatch League, like these are literally the best players in the world for this game. And they are frequently making these stupid, basic mistakes that like. Everybody is just like, wow, that was the most obviously wrong thing you could have possibly done right then. And it, if the best players are doing that, then that means everybody is. Like, Yeah, that's true. Like, that's, it, a, that's an endemic issue with the game. That's not just a player problem. That is a game problem. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I got in there and I was like, you know, there's a couple games. I was like, OK, maybe I'm just in a bad batch. I mean, this is a beta. Obviously, there's no like. I'm getting matched with whoever the frick is there. Right. Yeah. You know, and, but I, I tried and I tried and I was just like, Ugh, just, I don't know. It, it was rough for me anyway, but yeah, I'm, I'm hoping once it does come live and more things come up and maybe I'll learn, but no, I, I was, uh, <laughs> it made me not yep. want to play, but I, but I was excited to, you know, like, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Uh, my last piece of game news is uh, I'm actually saving it until the very end of the podcast. So. Okay. You, you fair know. enough. I'll <laughs> take it. So uh, this is actually pretty big news. Uh, we had mentioned it, or I, I had mentioned this before the podcast, but I wanted to talk about it a little more in depth. Uh, Discord voice chat is coming to Xbox consoles. Uh, I think this is really, really awesome. So what's cool about this, this isn't an app. 
that they're building on the Xbox. This is the in the system wreck. Like you can just go go right to Discord now. Yeah, I think that's really awesome. So the actually Microsoft is planning to bring it obviously uh, in a while. They didn't really say when, but you can actually if you're in the uh, insider program, you can actually download this and try this. And you'll just have to link your Discord account. Uh, if you've already got your Discord account linked to your Xbox, you'll have to redo it because this is a beta type, but you'll be able to just join into the Discord voice chat. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. I, I mean, this, I feel, is a good step uh, for people just talking because there's times that people want are playing their Xbox games, trying to cross-play with people, and don't have a setup, for example, like I do. I have my Xbox and my PC kind of together, and I can, I can do this and be in Discord and, and whatnot, but this is for the people that are able to just join Discord, because I think Discord yeah. is probably the main thing that a lot of people use voice chat with. Yeah, yeah, I think at this point, Discord has kind of, in terms of gaming, the gaming space, Discord has kind of taken over as the de facto like default voice uh, communication uh, service, which makes sense. They offer a lot of things that gamers like uh, and whatnot in a package that's convenient for them. Um, But like you said, it is, it has been a little bit difficult if you were a console gamer uh, in order, you know, to get on that. It felt a little bit like being a Nintendo gamer, (laughs) trying to talk to people (laughs) in your game online where you're playing on your console over here and then you have your headphones plugged into your phone over here and that's, you're using an app to talk to people. Um, Less than ideal. But this, I, I like, I like being able to use Discord for something like this because it allows you to not rely on the game having built in chat functionality on the one hand. And it also allows you to not have to rely on your cross play friends who on the Xbox, especially might very well be on PC to have their Xbox chat set up properly, you know, cause they may very well not like I've used it on windows 10 kind of sucks. Like it's, <laughs> it's, it just does not work as well on windows as it does on Xbox. So being able to use discord instead and have everybody talking to each other, Good. I do like this. I think it is really funny that like months ago, Discord announced a partnership with Sony to do this exact same thing for the PlayStation. We still haven't seen that land and they're already like, hey, we're partnering with Xbox. It's like, um, okay, you Discord, you do you like this is what I like about Discord not being owned by Microsoft. (laughs) You know, they were going to purchase them at one point. And uh, I'm glad that fell through because now Sony gets it. Microsoft gets it. Maybe at some point in time, the Switch will have actual voice chat provided by Discord. Nah, maybe. That's, Who knows? Th- that's not gonna happen. A lot of, <laughs> but a lot of oh, the boy. Steam Deck, the Steam Deck might, you know, so like stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of a lot of people were talking. They're like, you know, this is actually an interesting thing, not only for the Discord, but they're like, maybe this is how the Battle.net launcher will will work. Yeah. And once they buy it and they're like, oh, yeah, you see your friend in a clan community on Battle.net. Here you go. Boom. You know, and, and merging that. And I'm like, that's pretty cool. So uh, overall, I, this is good news. I mean, there's yeah. not really a downside. It's just being able to connect another device to Discord, which is a main thing that people use uh, on there. Uh, I, and right now they've only said it's just the voice chat. I don't know. Um, how exactly how it'll work. I tried to look up it like if I'm in the channel and someone starts streaming and I watch it or, or how mm. that would work. I'm not sure. They really just said it was more the voice chat. So Yeah. Well, you gotta start somewhere. Yep. Which is good. So um we'll we'll talk more into it. I I was sitting there thinking, I was like, oh I should try this and, and get in the insider program. But the last time I did that on my Xbox, uh Microsoft <laughs> uh banned me. So Yep. And my IP and I couldn't go to any other services. You guys that remember was, that? That was yeah. so funny. You're just like, yeah. man, why is my internet doing this weird thing? And we're all like, ah, like it wouldn't load. Microsoft working for website, us, nothing. Huh? And I'm sitting there and I, I got a hold of my internet service provider and they're like, there's nothing wrong on our end. We don't understand. And finally, one day I'm sitting there and I'm like, I freaking wonder. 
and I went ahead and reverted my Xbox back to the normal state, not the the insider program to it that day. Oh, look, you can no more block. Yep. Because Microsoft really interpreted their beta Xbox software pinging home so frequently <laughs> as a DDoS and <laughs> shut your IP down. <laughs> yeah. So that was fun. Anyway, uh, so I'll wait on that. I'm definitely going to wait on that. But I think yeah, that overall, funny. I think this is cool. And I would like to try it once it does come to fruition. I'd like to see how well it works if you know, we're doing our podcast and yep. you know, stuff like that. It'd be kind of fun. Anyway, so that's all really the gaming news that I do have on my website. Caleb? All right. So listen. Wait, wait, wait. Unless, unless Landon has one more thing. Oh. No. That, that would have been pretty funny, actually. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 you know, Wes, I'm gonna, I will say this. It's probably better that you don't try this Discord thing because it probably won't work. <laughs> Landon has a very hate hate relationship with Discord because it just does not work for him. Like listener, listener we spent hates Landon. <laughs> we spent probably twenty minutes before started recording to try and get Discord to work again for me because it just randomly was popping up with these dumb errors, and then it when the errors went away, it it voice and didn't work. That's the one thing that never works for me. Video works fine, voice never works for me. <laughs> so the fact that they're only doing voice on Xbox makes me think, oh, I guess nobody's going to be talking with each other because it's not going to work. <laughs> so funny. Uh, There's my sorry, rant buddy. for the day. Yeah. Freaking Discord. And it has a very particular lens on Discord. It's it's quite entertaining. I mean, we feel terrible for you. I'm sorry. We're so sorry. <laughs> so terrible. I'm so I'm so sorry this happened to you. Especially, I mean, I downloaded Edge. I remember, I remember when we first started using Discord, and the app doesn't work for me audio-wise, sometimes video. It doesn't work with Chrome. It doesn't work with Safari, and it didn't work with Edge. The only browser I can use Discord on on my computer is Firefox, of all things. So the fact that Microsoft thinks it's going to work on Xbox, which is probably going to tr- use some form of whatever Edge is using, it's not going to work. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, you know, the the code base for Firefox is open source, so maybe they're using that now that they're allowing paid open source apps in their stores. And- hey, there you go. See? Maybe <laughs> okay, maybe it might. It'll work. It'll work about 30% of the time for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep. Love-hate relationship. Actually, it's no, more hate. No, it's, definitely it's not hate, a love-hate hate yeah. relationship. Like I said, it's a hate-hate relationship. He hates it today. And then he hates it tomorrow, forever. and that's just how it goes. It's like a hate tolerate relationship. <laughs> there it is. Okay, we'll move on. All right, Caleb. Perfect. What's the last thing you want to talk about. We're we're gonna move from that onto a high note, listener. I'd like to talk to you about the best thing on the internet this week, which is obviously Doom Modders. Just every week, it's always they're the best people on the internet. So. In a bizarre twist, someone has released a mod for Doom to make the game more wholesome. Okay? So, the Caco Friendo mod allows you to befriend Caco demons with a friendly pat on the head. So you walk up to them and instead of super shotgunning them in the face, you pet them. And then a whole bunch of hearts pop out and you get the friendship voice line from the equally bizarre Mortal Kombat 2 friendship finishing moves when you do this. (laughs) And then the Caco Demon is now your friend and won't attack you or fight you. So. I, Yep. Wow. That's the thing that exists now. (laughs) Oh, my God. That's amazing. (laughs) It's it's, somebody thought to themselves, you know what? The, the Caco Demon is just smiling. It's just having a good time. Why do I have to kill it? Because it's just, it just doesn't know me. If we got to know each other, then me and the giant floating eyeball mouth. <laughs> it's just always been so misunderstood. It really exactly. just wants a friend. And it doesn't exactly. know how to express that properly until yeah. you express it properly by not I, shooting it in the face with a shotgun. Let's. I, Let's be real. In that universe, the friend that you would want would be the Doom Slayer. So, 
That's true. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, I don't think it's really forced, but he's like, hey, you want to be friends? I'd be like, yeah, I do. It's, don't shoot me in the face. You're not shooting me? Heck yes, we're besties. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's it's very much feels like this is the mod that kind of like leads into the addition to the uh, the Doom dating simulator from that we talked about last year. Um, <laughs> so you remember that one? <laughs> Yeah. Doom mods, man. I love this. I love these. Anyways, it's kind of it's the lead into a DLC for that where one of the uh the characters you can romance is actually the Doom Slayer, right? Because he wasn't. <laughs> it was just the monsters in, in the original right. dating sim. And a, you know, the Kaka Demon was one of them. So I don't know. I'm just saying you could go to a party in that and uh the Doom Slayer could walk in with a Kaka Demon, like yeah, you know, <laughs> it's not outside the realm of possibility. <laughs> oh man. So, yes, I, I think honestly, probably my favorite part was the reminder of that Mortal Kombat 2 thing. <laughs> yeah. That they had a finishing move in those instead of fatalities, which obviously are incredibly gruesome. And you get the epic fatality voice line when you have it. It's just that, except it's you friendship. like balloons and confetti and friendship. And uh, OK, thanks, Mortal Kombat. What the heck are you smoking? Can I have some? I remember that was the 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 developers. That was kind of the thing they added because of the people getting after them for being the most bloodiest <laughs> thing in the world yes. or whatever. They're yep. like, yeah, well, here you go. Or like, they remember did, you do they like did, the baby thing too? It, yeah, they didn't tone down the fatalities at all. They're all still there. You can still rip people's spines out through their stomach and that sort of thing. But you can also throw them a party. That's, you know, good old. Friends. It's it's great. It's a great intersection of gaming history. And yeah, the Caco Frendo mod for Doom. I think it's actually Doom 2 technically. So the 1994 game instead of the 1993 game, you know, like if you want to care about that. Um, but yeah, so there you go. Doom modders. They're, just, they're the best people on the Internet. Good stuff. Keep up the good work. Very good stuff. All right. Well, I think we're coming to the end of the episode here with everything that we wanted to talk about. Dear listener, if you wanted to get a hold of us or wanted to mention anything or have us talk about something, you can get a hold of us on our social media platforms. You can also, if you want to see any of our old streaming or any kind of new videos that maybe Caleb is making, if so. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> well, <laughs> on our YouTube uh, channel, you can see there. And if you, if you feel like you'd like to support us, you can actually get a hold of, see us on Patreon, uh, calling all platforms on there as well. All right, dear listener, have a good week. Bye-bye. See ya. Calling All Platforms is a production of Supporter Sound Studios. To learn more about how you can support the podcast, go to www.patreon.com slash callingallplatforms.